Right, welcome back. Uh, let me just share my screen. Uh, before that, uh, is everyone tracking along? Uh, please let me know if I'm too fast or uh, is it okay? Everyone able to understand? Able to follow what we're learning? I'm following, thank you. Okay, great. All right, uh, let me just share the notes. <coughs> Right, just made the fonts a little bigger so it'll be easier for us to see. All right, so we stopped at having true fellowship and edification. Let's go to point number six, why we need cell groups. Again, very, very important aspect is exercising of spiritual gifts. Now, we did read before this, the church in Corinth met at a home, right? Now, picture this. Imagine there were 1,000 people, right? And everyone want to exercise their spiritual gifts, right? So some of them say, hey, I'm good at, uh, you know, I, I feel God has called me to be prophetic. Or some of them say, I, I like to speak in tongues or I can interpret tongues. Or I know that I have the gift of uh, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Now, if the church is a thousand member church or even not even thousand keep it 500 right? how will we exercise those gifts it's not going to happen right of course you know there'll be ministry time after church or during the church time we can pray and uh, but we are not exercising those gifts we know those gifts are there not able to exercise it now cell groups is a wonderful place for each and every believer to exercise their gifts and to develop their callings right in a non-threatening environment right so there are two things here exercising your gifts and developing your calling so for example there's this young boy maybe who's 25 years old just become a believer doesn't understand much about spiritual gifts and calling just just you know just learning he goes into a small group and imagine this a, the small group leader says hey um uh, i've noticed that you're very good at uh, singing right when we have the singing when we sing songs uh, in the cell group you you're very gifted you sing beautifully you've got a beautiful voice and the cell group leader says why don't you lead the worship in the coming uh, you know cell groups in the coming months so he says, okay, I, I lead, I'll learn whatever I can. And he begins to do well, right? Now, over time, he says, uh, he goes to the, you know, live cell group leader and says, um, I just wrote down a few things that God ministered to me when I was reading this passage from the Bible. So I feel that this can, you know, I put a tune to it as well. And I feel that this can become a song. And so he begins to write. And the cell group leader says, yeah, wonderful. Write more and come up with melody. Ask God to give you this. Now, what's happening? This young boy probably didn't know he could sing well. This boy probably didn't know he's a good writer. And he didn't know about how to you know, come up with melody for the songs. But he was free to do that because he was in a cell group and he knew that he could go to the cell group leader and share, right? It was a non-threatening environment. Now the cell group leader didn't say, what is, you know, what is this way you've written? It doesn't even make sense. Or, uh, you know, it is, it is too common. No, we encourage them, right? Now this is, this what an example I've shared really happened in our church. Right, where this young boy, he was, he's in his early twenties, and uh, you know he began to write. He loved to. Write. He didn't know he liked to write, but he began to write, right? uh, write a lot of things. Right, he just keep writing in his books, in his diary, wherever you get a paper, he would write. Right, he would come up with rhyming words to these, uh, you know, very poetic kind of lyrics. And finally, he was part of our you know, uh, uh, APC album, he was part of the writing team. He wrote almost all of the songs, right? 
how did that happen he started off in a small group which he didn't know a gift that he didn't know uh, encouraged by a small group leader god used him so powerfully and even now he just keeps writing right so small groups is a wonderful place to exercise gifts to develop in their calling right somebody told me hey why don't you play the guitar for the cell group i said okay i don't know too many chords I'll, i can just manage because there were only 10 odd people inside said, okay uh, just give me the songs and and so we i used to practice a few days before <clears throat> try to get the chords try to get the structure and then eventually what happened was the life group leader said oh, hey paul can lead worship can we ask him to lead here and that I got an opportunity and then through that got another opportunity and then came the bigger opportunities so it all started small right so as cell group leaders and you may be cell group members do not hold yourself back in a small group setting right it is it is a place where you can exercise your gifts right if it's prophetic if you feel that there's a prophetic call right begin to open up begin to share if you feel that you have the gift of healing right begin to pray over people just exercise those gifts right people may be healed people may not be healed if they're healed praise god if they're not healed it's all right press on right uh, step out of your comfort zone another very important point of cell groups is raising up leaders and we talked about this right Every cell group member is encouraged to later on become a cell group leader, taking responsibility of winning souls and discipling them. Now, how do we raise leaders? To look at the biblical approach is what we were speaking about, you know, being there life to life. But a good leader will recognize other leaders. Uh, look at this if if you if we are a good leader god gives us the ability to recognize other people and we know and we will recognize their potential as leaders right they may not be doing anything right now they may not even be in the church uh, actively involved but they may be part of your life group and they may not even be doing anything in the life group but god can use them as leaders right so god may speak to us as uh, cell group leaders and say you know use this choose this person teach him you know direct him mentor him lead him or her and we may think oh man god can we choose somebody else this this person i don't think he knows anything but look at what jesus did powerful example set by the lord jesus christ what did he do he chose Peter, unschooled, untrained fisherman. All that Peter knew was fishing. That's all he knew. There's no account of his great oratory speech, of his wonderful uh, uh, talent of uh, you know speaking in front of people. No, nothing. God said, "You, you." You are Petros, and on this rock I will build my church. God used him powerfully. Right? So a leader can recognize other leaders. Right? Uh, so when when here's the thing that we must do, right? Especially when it comes to raising up other leaders. Never come to a place where you say, okay, this person I don't think can be a leader. Never make assumptions because we don't know what God has put the ability that God has put in that person right so if, even if you look in in church history many of them looked at William Carey and said what is this man trying to do he, he he's even as a little boy he was a shy very cowardly very fearful but who knew that he would come to a nation which he didn't even know Come and start a work here and do these great things for God. Right? 
who knew that nobody nobody thought of it right uh, and 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 you see that god has always right, used people unqualified making them using them greatly for god's kingdom right now so that's where comes the whole aspect of us raising leaders of course there's a process of raising leaders uh, i'll just give you a few points one is when you recognize somebody as a leader you see a potential in them don't immediately go and tell them hey i see this potential in you i think two years down the line you can be a leader you don't have to do that what do we have to do we can just you know recognize it make a note of it write it down and then begin to begin to speak to him begin to talk begin to spend that extra time with them what did jesus do he had 12 disciples but in some places he only took peter james and john he recognized something in them peter went on to become the leader of the church james was of course he was martyred later on but uh, and then john the youngest of them all right so so when we recognize people begin to spend that additional time a little effort will need to be there but then you 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 know that okay this person it's time that you know he's growing he or she is growing in the lord i can you know for example you you're a life group leader 12 of them there and you have somebody in your mind uh, in the life group in the cell group and you know that this person can lead a life group so you work with them two years and here's the important part release them into what god is calling them you know sometimes we want to raise up leaders and use those leaders only under us you know go get my water bottle go get my bag can you lead the worship can you do this can you do that all the work is done that's not how it is raising up leaders is when we raise up leaders we're looking at them to be better than what we are so there's no place of jealousy there's no place of strife there's no place for uh, inferiority complex nothing right everyone are equal look at look at the wonderful example of the great apostle paul he chose timothy at a young age and finally at the end in second timothy paul uh, timothy is looking after the church in ephesus and he's telling the believers of the church there he is a fellow worker a brother in christ and he has the same spirit that i have right he's not uh, telling the church in ephesus you know and he also tells them uh, you know he tells timothy timothy don't let people despise you because of your age but you are a leader you are the leader in that church so he also uh, makes him understand his leadership role and he doesn't tell the church member the church in ephesus you know this boy timothy i found him when he was 17 he was in that church there in uh, corinth and then i found him i took him i raised him up i did this to him i taught him this i taught him that i took him uh, into my wings and i made him become a thing all he did was he said he's a brother in christ and he has the same spirit he's my son my brother and he has the same spirit that i have what a powerful example of raising up leaders apostle paul was not worried that timothy would become more famous or more powerful he was not he said he gave timothy the, the one of the most difficult places to handle but he knew the spirit that was there in him right when we raise leaders never hinder them or stop them from you know from growing in their abilities always treat them as co-equal with you or greater than you you and i right next one why do we need life groups cell groups there's accountability every member of the church is accountable we grow spiritually we fulfill our part in the entire vision of the church uh, now this not only includes you know evangelism and church and attendance but every area of ministry 
uh, is is looked after right so there's accountability as believers we know okay so for example epc to be salt and light to the city voice to the nation and to the nations okay so how do i start off to be salt and light so as a life group leader as life group members we know that we have to reach out we need to be salt we need to be light to the people around us we need to and for us to do that we must grow spiritually as well so there's this accountability I need to hear the word of God. I need to read the word of God. I need to pray. I need to seek God and grow spiritually. Only then I can be the salt and light to others. right? So that accountability is there. And then you have life group, cell group leaders who can you know, uh, encourage us even more. right? And then what happens is uh, it also helps in, in different areas of ministry. So uh, we begin to have good leaders in different areas of ministry, children's church, men's ministry, women's ministry, different areas. And finally, uh, cell groups avoid continuation of dead programs. Now, now, sometimes doing things continuously may become monotonous, right? Uh, and the moment you feel things are getting monotonous, try to make changes, adapt, improvise. Right? Let me share this wonderful example that happened to one of our life groups here in Bangalore. It was a youth life group, right? Uh, only boys life group. And they used to meet every, I think it was every alternate week. I'm not sure if they meet every week or alternate week, but they used to meet. Uh, and it was the same. You know 10 odd boys meeting together and they would talk they would share about their uh you know their week and uh, you know discuss the sunday sermon and this is going on so there came a time when the life group leader came up to me and said you know i just feel that things are you know it's just repetitive uh we are there we meet everyone we talk to each other we have a good time. We, of course, we pray. We do all that, but but this needs to be something extra. So, as I was talking to him, I I felt in my heart that they need to step up, meaning they can do something different. So I told them, why don't you, as a as a life group, look at going to a children's home or going to a destitute home, or why don't you look at Apart from your cell groups, why don't you all try to go together and play a sport, football, badminton, cricket, anything? I said, oh, we can do that. I said, yeah, you can do that. Right? You have your life group. But apart from that, you, you do something together. And they were all youth, not married, not much commitments, working. I said, OK. So they went. They, what they decided was, we'll have basketball. So they would meet for life group one one day of the week and then during the second week they will meet for basketball right so they will all play basketball together uh, there's nothing spiritual about it right but they will play basketball uh, i think they also uh, played other games i'm not sure but uh, but they played sports together and so when they came to meet in the house for life groups there was a greater bond all of a sudden there was this feeling of, hey, we are all, you know, a team. We are all one team. We are, we, are, we are growing together. So suddenly they felt this feeling of, you know, oneness, unity. And they began to share with each other. They began to share their problems and challenges. or uh, and, and they began to see people in the life group getting ministered to. So what, what happened here? It was nothing. It was just a suggestion of starting something additional. And that you know that monotonous or dead program, tradition kind of thing uh, was taken out. Right? So as a life group leader, we must ask God for wisdom when it comes to these kind of situations. Right? So these situations can come because there'll be times when you know you have a cell group and you, you've been having it for like five years or 
and things get monotonous so make changes so the same way you know i when i, I suggest life group leaders uh, there are some cell groups that go for prayer walk in the morning 7 a.m or 6 a.m they go for prayer walk around the neighborhood finish the prayer walk go have a breakfast go back home so the whole day nothing has changed there are some who go for prayer drive there are some who visit orphanages especially during christmas and during easter uh, these times uh, they go visit people visit uh, uh, there, there was a cell group that would go to prison uh, but i don't know if they have permission now but they used to go maybe once in a month go and pray for people right so as cell group leaders you can come up with these ideas right so these are few nine reasons here as to uh, why we have cell groups and uh, of course there could be plenty more uh, but these are just some of them that are the core reasons for having a life group right so what does a cell church look like now we looked at a cell group uh, what is a cell church uh, Look, let's look at those points there. Cell Church uh, has Sunday celebration services where everyone come together for worship and the word, and there's an overall direction of the, and, and there's an overall direction of the local church. They keep in sync with the local church, right? This is a cell church. Uh, they meet during the week, once a week or once in two weeks uh, in cell groups. Uh, again. A lot of the reasons why it's done is the same. Build strong relationship. People are to be ministered right away. Ministry is done through cell groups. Uh, they do not have to wait for a church to start a minute program or ministry. So most of the things are done through the cell group itself. right? So for example, if they feel we need to do evangelism today, they can go out do evangelism if they feel they there should be 21 days of fasting and prayer they can begin right if they want to do other ministry uh, you know men meeting together women meeting together or families just uh, having one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one fellowship they can do all that why because the cell church is its own entity right and the cell leader sees uh, a ministry opportunity and takes the cell group uh, to meet that need, right? Uh, souls are continuously brought to Christ. The church and its ministries are focused on building leaders, right? Every individual is is gripped with the vision of the church, and uh, each cell group meeting, uh, the vision is rehearsed over and over and over again, so it's never lost. Uh, and cell churches. Uh, have okay, special events, special meetings, crusades, seminars, where there's active participation uh, from all the cell members. Now, why is this important? Because now if we are in a church of 500 people and the church decides let's do a seminar or a crusade, I'm sure not all of them will get an opportunity to serve. Right? But in a cell church, it could be 20 people, all of them get an opportunity to serve in maybe a crusade or a seminar. Right Now, what is important is <clears throat> knowing this difference is good, right? But let not this difference uh, bring a separation. And hey, you're a cell church, but we are a uh, we have cell groups. We are a church with cell groups, but you are a cell church. No, the overall vision again is to make disciples to build God's kingdom. Right? Just the functioning is different. Right, and it's not very different as well, but there's certain few differences. Let's look at these examples, right? Well, uh, cell churches and some of the most powerful, strongest leading churches are cell churches. Right? Can we picture that, right? David Paul Yonggi Cho, Yoido Full Gospel Church in Seoul, Korea, which is the biggest church up to now. Uh, began in 1958 first six years there was no cell church right 
there was no cell search. So Yong, uh, David Yong Gicho, for the first six years, he was completely burnt out. It says that I think uh, for the first six years, they were, they were still in the hundreds. Right? Uh, David Yong Gicho was really, really stressed out. And then he began the cell model. What is the cell model? Three things that they followed in the cell trip. One is prayer, cell groups, and then growth. So let my people grow and grow. Growth what? Both numerically and spiritually. But the outcome of the cell groups was extremely huge. What happened? From from about 65,000, from about starting one or two cell groups, it went on to have 65,000 cell groups in the church. 65,000 cell churches. So meaning what? There were, it was not like they all met at one place always. So they had 65,000 places, leaders, cell churches, with 750,000 members altogether. Can you picture that? First six years, nothing happened. Why? There were no cell groups. Later on, 65,000 cells, 750,000 members in the church. How did he do this? Through cell groups. What were they doing? They would meet in different places. They would pray. They would break bread. People began to come. So probably, uh, there's, there's, we don't know how many was, what is the number of each cell group. I'm just giving a rough, I'm just giving a number out. Say, for example, there were 100 people in one cell church with about 10 leaders. So there were 100 people in one cell church. All are coming, probably Sunday, Wednesday, whatever day. They're coming together. Worship, word, breaking of bread, prayer, ministering to each other, flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. People are getting saved. The cell groups are going out, reaching out to many people. Those people are getting invited to different cell groups from, just, just picture this, from 1, <coughs> 10, 100, 200. The cell groups are just growing. And because of the cell groups growing, people are coming into the cell groups. The church grew to 750,000 members, all through cell groups. Right? And look at this other one, the International Charismatic Mission, Bogota, Colombia. Right? Now, this, this church also followed David Yongicho's uh, model and David Yongicho's system. Began in 1983, a group of 12, groups of 12, cell groups, and uh, they had evangelism. First seven years with church, with David Yongicho's system, the church grew to 3,000 members. Now, from there, they started to focus on planting new cells instead of multiplying existing groups. So 2,400 cell groups were started, and the church grew to 350,000 members in 1999. Right? So that's what? 16 years. They started in 1983. First seven years, was the church grew to 3,000 members, which was wonderful, especially in a place like Colombia, right? Now, after that, the remaining years, they started planting new cells, and the group started multiplying 2,400 cells, 350,000 members in 1999. Right? There are many churches all over the world who have implemented this G12 model to started by uh, David Yonggi Cho. Right? The Harvest Assembly in Virginia, the Christ, these are some examples here. The Christian Center in Ecuador, 
Kensington Temple, England, World Press Center, Louisiana. And, and how did these churches grow using this G12 model? Right, the 12 model was basically 12 of them, um, uh, 12 in each group, and they would you know, just begin to multiply, multiply, and multiply. Right, so will the cell church concept work in our city and your city? Right? Now, some of us may have the question, okay, that is 1980s, it used to work. Nowadays, people are too busy. People don't have time to come Monday to Friday. They're busy, uh, so they're all working, students studying. Things have changed. True, things have definitely changed. Uh, city life, urban life has changed. <clears throat> but will this church concept work in our city? Yes. Why? Because regardless of our region, regardless of culture, regardless of people, regardless of technology, and all that we see around us, God has created us to have relationships. You can't keep a person in a room for one week with his phone or with technology, he may say, yeah, I'm managing. But I'm sure deep in his heart, he'll want to speak to somebody. And he'll want to speak to somebody. And I think uh, the value of relationships was, <clears throat> was really felt during COVID. Right? Uh, I'll never forget the <clears throat> that uh, initial 2020. <clears throat> it was very difficult. <clears throat> Sorry. It was very difficult. Right? Imagine nobody to talk to. There were people who used to call me and said, I don't know what to do. I'm, uh, I need to talk to somebody. I need to go out. I can't. Why is that? Because we are, no matter what, do we, did we have uh, uh, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, all of these things, uh, internet, everything was available. But why were people so, they were saying, no, we need to go out. Even if the, there's uh, food delivery at home, no, we want to go out. Why? Because we were created to have relationships. So it doesn't matter whether we are in a high-end, top-end city and all of those things, no. We can we are made to have relationships with people, and and so this will definitely work. People prefer talking to each other than talking to their computers and phones. People in general are hospitable and like uh, uh, to visit homes, and cells allow unsaved to explore now uh, without being very public about their interest. Another example would be that of uh, Iran and Iraq, right? Uh, where a lot of, lot of people from the Islamic faith are coming into, uh, and coming into the gospel, they're getting to understand. All they're doing is they're watching their TVs, uh, maybe God TV and all these other channels, they're accept, expect, accepting the Lord Jesus as their personal savior. And they all started going into these small groups and praying, right? And if you, even if you look at the underground church in China during the communist time, the early 1950s and 60s, there were cells, cell churches, cell groups that were uh, you know, functioning. Uh, and this wonderful book by uh, Brother Andrew called uh, God Smuggler to China, how he smuggled Bibles into China. And they would meet in small groups and read their Bibles and put them away and put them in boxes and dig the ground and put, the, put them all in the ground. How did it all start? It all started through cell groups, small groups. It's a wonderful place uh, for us to really empower, empower, impact people's lives, right? So uh, I think we'll stop. Okay, we have this last one, and then we'll stop. Uh, possible challenges and solutions, uh, as we said, people work long hours, odd timings. You know, call centers, software companies. Uh, what is the solution? Can have workplace cell groups, cell groups with peers, uh, meaning there will be people who are. Uh, you know, maybe seniors or even your peers 
start groups with them people like going to meetings so we cannot do away with large meetings but it all they also like these small meetings uh, and where they can really uh, ask questions and learn right apart from sunday services uh, you know there will be times where uh, people you know there will be times when people don't want to get involved in the local church ministry they don't mind coming and serving uh, but they don't want to get involved or coming and attending but they don't want to really volunteer and get involved so uh so the, here's a place small groups is a place where they can really you know uh minister in small settings and over time they will also minister in the church if they'd like to right so the challenges are plenty right there are going to be many challenges and we can't do away with that right uh, practical challenges in, which are true challenges are there but god is bigger than those challenges and if god wants to he can really minister to us he can really use us uh, to be great leaders to reach out and raise up many other leaders right so we'll stop here uh, we'll continue from next week uh, we'll continue from the apc 12 model and uh, we'll pick up from uh, you know what we do as a church and how we are able to uh, minister to people within our congregation right any questions uh, i know i've been speaking a lot uh, i hope you all are able to follow uh, yeah any questions any thoughts no questions all right all right so let's close in prayer maybe one of us can uh, pray and close okay maxim yes i've got your question sir go ahead maxim yeah my question is on last semester you didn't mark my assignments both mid term and last term assignments okay so was it uh, did you hand it in before the due date maxim yes okay i'll i'll just double check that right sometimes it could be a technical error i'll i'll double check that thank you so much uh say yes uh same as myself uh, okay I, I, I never got my score but, uh, okay i'll i'll do that i'll double check if, if there's anybody else uh you can just put your name in the chat and i'll just double check uh, that and send you your marks uh, Nobody else, right? Everyone else have received your marks? Right. OK. Uh, all right. Can any one of us close in prayer? OK, Kennedy, too. That's OK. Yes, anyone can close in prayer. Maxon, you want to pray? No problem, sir. Thank you. Go ahead. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for having us this time. We learn a lot in this today's session. May you, Lord, bless everyone who attend this class. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a great week ahead. I'll see you next week. God bless.